Can you hear me? Wonderful. Um, <coughs> when I was in the States, in Berkeley and in Stanford in the 70s and the 80s, of course, a couple of books were very prominent. It was, first of all, the juvenile book of Fukuyama about the end of history. It was, of course, Brzezinski's, the great chess game. And it was Huntington. But it was not so much at that particular time in the 70s and Berkeley discussed the clash of civilizations. Um, there was a book by him which came out three years earlier, American Politics, The Promise of Disharmony, which basically uh, stated a um, uh, very, um, very uh, provocative uh, thesis that the so-called SNS years, the 60s and the 70s, have eroded American institutionalism, have eroded the trust of the American people in government, and the fight against the three big, big business, big labor, big government was commencing. So a couple of years later, hunting came out and moved this kind of analysis on an international um, level, the so-called clash of civilizations. And interestingly enough, last year here in DOC, we have had one of the um, inspirators or the mentors of um, uh, Huntington's um, uh, thesis, um, a professor, colleague of mine in Göttingen, uh, Basam Tibi. Basam Tibi came out a year ago, a year before Huntington, which, with a book which was called The Battle of Cultures, The Struggle of Cultures. And there was a kind of an Kind of an, I wouldn't say animosity, but a kind of a competition between Huntington and Basan TV on, on the topic, because Basan TV was, was much more forthright and being a Syrian and um, Syrian German living for uh, the last 20 or 30 years in Germany, um, he, he had a different angle on the whole situation. So this was 25 years ago. The idea behind uh, Huntington's book, and I think here he differed very much from Basam TV, was of course to um, be in opposition to, um, um, for especially to the bright and optimistic spirit of the 90s. <laughs> what, what was the optimism founded on? The demise and the collapse of the Soviet Union, the end of the Cold War, American triumphalism, the European Union finally got its act together and tried to build something like a political, economic, and social entity after Maastricht 1992. It was very, very painful. German unification was there, but there was no, and of course, the, for the first time, we saw in, in, in Europe the eruption of, of war situation in the Balkans. So this kind, but this re, did not really reflect uh, within uh, Huntington's an analysis, I think, the, uh, or the, the description, I think that Huntington was in many, many ways, if you look back from, from nowadays uh, to the 90s, wrong in his basic assumptions. First of all, if you, it was less a threat or a clash between civilizations. It was a threat and a clash within civilizations. If you look at the figures of death and torture and terror alone in the Muslim world, there are millions of millions of people have been killed by Muslims. And God was not the actor, was not a player. It was interest. And the interests are still, I think, the driving force. It is not so much moral, tradition, religion, ethnic elements and so forth. It is the underestimation, which I do think is in Huntington's book, of the role of the state. Huntington probably was um, taken over by this kind of positive thinking on the one hand side and criticizing the, the, thing, the, the, the um, um, experts on the other hand, that 
the 90s started to create a new element of order within the international structures. Bipolarity was over. The two camps didn't exist anymore. There was only one surviving camp or a leader or block leader, which was the United States. And the whole idea behind him, if you read uh, Hunting very carefully, and I think this is um, um, under, underlined by Brzezinski's uh, book, not only the great chessboard, but a, little bit, a couple of years later, which I th a book by him, which is uh, much more realistic and um, 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 uh, 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 predicts into the, into the future, the choice, 2003. What was, what was the issue? To keep and guarantee American supremacy in, international, in the international world. Without the American supremacy in, in global affairs, there would be chaos. And in so far, Hunting was right, because what we have seen from the 90s onwards is a kind of development in the areas which were basically divided and controlled and disciplined by the former two superpowers, especially in the threshold countries in the third world. And now one of these elements, one of these pillars was gone. So the United States was, uh, was the only um, re uh, uh, remaining actor and factor in, in, in global politics. There was no China in the 90s. There was no European Union as a geopolitical actor. There was no Soviet Union or the post-Soviet society anymore. It was only the United States. And the, I think this, this kind of element to keep what you have reached or what was given to you by chance by the collapse of the Soviet Union needed to be guaranteed. And of course, I mean, um, Huntington took over, then the moral and uh, ideological elements of, um, um, of American, um, of the United States as a global player, which was the institutionalized liberal project. Universalism, morals, pluralism, democracy, universal values. This, is, this was the ideological smokescreen, which he as well developed and, and, and portrayed. And I think that we are now, 25 years later, coming to, to an end of this kind of period. And this is very, very much developed in the expert community of the United States. If you look, for example, which is, is one of my, my, my favorite uh, reports, uh, uh, if you look at the global trends analysis by the National Intelligence Agency, uh, uh, um, agency um, from 2009 onwards, in 2009, for the first time, the United States leading expert institutions and experts, politicians, and so forth, as, as well Europeans and Japanese, conceded that the unilateral period after the demise or the collapse of the Soviet Union ended somewhere around 2007, 2008, 2009. For the first time in the 2008 report, which was given to Obama, the United States export community spoke openly about the world is driving towards multipolarity. And the United States will lose influence. There will be the most important and potent military factor for the decades to come. And this proved correct. But institutionally, their influence was waning. And these kind of issues were repeated 2012 in the next report about an, an exchange world in 2035, and the newest one in 2017, which was handed two months late, two la and later after the an, an, a normal um, introduction to, um, uh, to Trump in February 2017. Continuation of the element, the United States cannot do it alone anymore. They cannot keep supremacy. They cannot be the only the policemen for the world order. They need allies, and they need burden sharing. And then, and and in all these reports, this is quite interesting as well. Islam doesn't play a major role, or the and all the so-called cultural 
and, uh, and, and, and the clashes. Even the Soviet, even uh, Russia doesn't play a, m a major role. Russia is a kind of a spoiler, but will not go to active spoiling actions like war or whatever. The Crimean situation is being contained. Yeah, China has is is uh, is, is, is not controllable, but China ha is not an actor which will um, um, uh, develop a geostrategic policy from a peaceful economic and political penetration of other areas into a kind of a militant aggressive behavior. So basically, the whole situation rests as in the 90s, but in this time under very much changed conditions on the United States. What is going on in the United States? Yeah? What is going on in the United States? Of course, Fred Dahlmeier, who comes from the United States, suffers very much from the Trump administration, but in a certain way, the Trump administration probably expresses, dear Fred, a majority behavior and sentiment of the people who have been left behind in the last three or four decades of American development. And they, are not, and, and, and they will go on <coughs> supporting such, a, such policies of neo-isolationism and so forth and so forth. So we have had something like this already in the, in, in the Nixon years with selective globalism, but this time it is much stronger uh, expressed. So what to do? I think that the United States will not interfere. We have seen it, their, their behavior in Syria. Um, maybe spot to spot interventions. Um, the whole area of North Africa, they will try to keep the uh, allies which is Egypt, of course, which is Jordania, and with, which is in Israel, and um, Iraq is open, okay. Saudi Arabia is in conflict with, with Iran. I think here, again, we cannot speak about a clash of, culture or of cultures or of, of civilizations. It's an inter-Muslim struggle for dominance of the whole area. And the, and, 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 and the external actors, like the United States or other um, 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 members, member states which are potent enough are using and instrumentalizing the, the conflict situations there but at the, at, the, at, the, at, the, at, the, at the end of the day the only thing which matters here in these kind of developments is interest. And we have the same situation in Europe. We have the same situation in Europe. We have not a, a Slavic Christian Orthodox conflict here. Nothing is driven by religion. In, in the relationship between Russia and the European Union or Germany and, and, and Russia. It's all bullshit. No, it is a, it's, it's, a, it's a problem of interest. The United States wants to control the energy markets in Europe and kick the Russians out. Simple as this. Yeah? And of course, they're using elements of disunity. Both sides are using it in the European Union to cementing and guaranteeing their followers. This is normal, cynical, but realistic foreign policy driven by interest. So this, let's say, is a macro-political level. What, what, is, what is new here is something which um, I found very interesting in the composition of the, um, of the conference and the session so far is that you're looking inside. You look, you're looking from the top down, what is happening on the ground, what affects the people, and so forth. Because um, this was missing so far in the more general macroeconomic or macro-political an analysis and descriptions of how the world, the world would find a new balance or a new order or whatever. Um, and, and here, I think we have no solutions for what is coming. I just um, uh, noticed a new book which has came out and is very much discussed in, um, in, 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 in France by Smith about uh, the millions and millions of potential on working, work immigrant migrations of people in sub-Saharan Africa. Yeah? The demographic explosion has happened in, in, in sub-Saharan Africa and they're not going to the United States. They're driving north to Europe. And this is a real problem we have to face. And I think we are facing it already in the discussion and the conflicts we have between the so-called conservative sister parties 
and, and, and Germany. We have it in regard to other um, developments of populism everywhere in Europe. And I think we have to deal with this and we have to find answers. And the answer is to find maybe bilateral relationships and agreements between Germany, Italy, France, Italy, and so forth and so forth. But if it helps, we don't know. We don't know. It will not stop the flow of migration. It will maybe strengthen border fortifications <coughs> or, 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 or speed up um, uh, to, to bring back the ones who have no chance of being recognized as asylum seekers in, in our countries. But the problem with stay was for, for, for decades, and therefore I think it is very important that we continue to look basically at the lower level what is happening in our societies and how we deal with the problems which are created by the, the developments which have not been forecast neither by hunting nor by others. They are very new, and I wish that we are um, approve and, and, and um, approaching a little bit uh, the, um, um, the solution area <coughs> and not only remain in describing the nasty elements. Thank you very much for coming here. And my pleasure is to introduce as a first speaker Eric Ringmar from Lund University. Mm -hmm.